Hello friends, welcome back. In the last video, we had seen in detail what is meant by the transformation and what is the box loss transformation with the help of practical example in Minitab. Now, as a continuation of that topic, in this video, we are going to understand the Johnson transformation with the help of practical example. So let's begin. The first topic in learning of Johnson transformation is to understand when to use the Johnson transformation. We can use the Johnson transformation when we want to transform our non-normal data to follow a normal distribution using the Johnson distribution system. What is meant by Johnson distribution system that we will see with the help of practical example in this video only. We can use the Johnson transformation when our data contains any values including negative. We had also seen into the last video that we cannot use the box cost transformation when our data contains the negative values. In that case, we need to use Johnson transformation. When we want to store the transform values in the worksheet, then also we can use the Johnson transformation. We can also determine appropriate transformation by using this Johnson transformation. In many cases, we can see the box cost transformation is not appropriate. In that case, we can also use this Johnson transformation. One more thing, when we are using the Johnson transformation, we need to remember that our data must be for continuous variables. Now let's understand what are the different hypotheses that are available when we are using the Johnson transformation. As we had seen, there are two types of hypotheses. One is null hypothesis and another is alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis in case of Johnson transformation is H0 colon, the data follows the normal distribution. And the alternative hypothesis is opposite of that, data do not follow a normal distribution. That means we are going to observe the p-value and based on that, we are going to take the decision whether our data is following the normal distribution or not. After understanding what is meant by the Johnson transformation and what are the different types of hypotheses in it, let's understand the Johnson transformation with the help of practical example. A quality engineer for a nutritional supplement company wants to assess the calcium content in vitamin capsules. The engineer collects a random sample of capsules and records their calcium content. From the past experience, the engineer knows that the data are right skewed. We are also going to perform the normality plot and based on that we can understand whether the data is following normal distribution or not. The engineer performs a Johnson transformation to transform the data to follow a normal distribution and to store the transform values in the worksheet for further analysis. So let's perform the Johnson transformation on our data into the Minitab. This is the data for calcium content in capsules. Now let's first understand whether our data is following the normal distribution or not. To check that, we can perform the normality test. Go to the stat, basic statistics, and then go to the normality test option. We can see there what is a message coming. Determine whether your data follow a normal distribution. Use when you have continuous measurement such as length or weight. So let's perform this normality test on our data. In variable, select the column that is containing our data, which is calcium, and then click OK. We can see what are the options there that are already selected. Test for normality that we are using Anderson Darling. Okay, then click OK. We will be getting this normal probability plot. After performing the normality test, we can say that the p value into the probability plot is less than 0 0.05, which is 0 0.046. So we can say that the data is not following the normal distribution. That means we need to perform the data transformations to transform our data to the normal distribution. Okay, so use the Johnson transformation here. Go to the stat, quality tools, and then we can select the option of Johnson transformation. We can also see what is a message coming there. Transform your data to fit a normal distribution before performing capability analysis. That is one of the application of Johnson transformation can be used on a variety of non-normal data, including negative numbers and zero. So let's perform the Johnson transformation. Here, our data is arranged in a single column. So we can select the option here as a single column that is calcium. Store transform data that we can select any column. Here we can select it as a C2. In options, there is option to select a p-value. For best results, we should select it as a 0.05 or 0.1.
by default it is 0 0.10 so keep the default selection of 0 0.10 as it is and then click ok and then click ok after performing the johnson transformation we can see that we are getting this graphical representation and we are also getting the transform data into the column c2 we can also rename it as a transform transform data this is another application of the johnson transformation now let's understand what is the interpretation of these results if you look at these results this contains a two probability plots for original data as well as transformed data along with their p-values. Now let's understand their interpretation in detail. Minitab displays a normal probability plot and a p-value for the original and transformed data. If the data are normal, the points on the plot follow an approximately straight line and the p-value is greater than the alpha level, which can be 0 0.05 or 0 0.10. To evaluate the distribution fit, and alpha level of 0 0.05 or 0 0.10 is often used that we had already seen. For the original data, the data points on the probability plot do not follow a straight line. We can say there is a little bit curvature and the p-value which is 0 0.046 is less than our alpha which indicates that the original calcium data are not normal. But if you look at the transformed data, then we can say that for the transformed data, the data points on the probability plot fall along the straight line and the p-value that is 0.986 which is greater than the alpha level. Therefore, the transform calcium data follows a normal distribution. The third graph in the Johnson transformation for calcium that indicates the representation of the transform data. If you want to calculate the transform data, then we can use this function which is equal to 0 0.804604 plus 0 0.893699 into ln of this expression. So we can say that calculation of the transformation function by using the Johnson transformation it little bit complicate compared to box cost transformation. This is all about Johnson transformation with the help of practical example in Minitab. If you have found this information useful then please do not forget to like and comment. If you want to receive notification for such valuable information in future as well, then please don't forget to subscribe it. Finally, at the end of this video, if you want to learn Lean Six Sigma most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijaysabe.co/join. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.